Hey folks! Okay, well, last time we went through the table-driven approach to generate our scanners. This time we'll look at the direct-coded approach. So, this relies on the same general logic for going through our DFA, but this time instead of filling in entries in the table, what we want to do is to actually produce source code that has the same effect, so produce case statements or if-else statements that essentially carry out the same actions as the lookup tables without actually using the lookup tables. So that's the idea, and we'll uh, have a bit of a play with it here. It's meant to reduce the cost of having these huge lookup tables and the impact that has on uh, caching and paging and just straight memory use. So the trade-off is that it means that we've got our source code is going to be hard-coded for the specific language that we're recognizing, so we actually have to produce a different program for every language instead of producing uh, just a different table for each language. And it means that our source code is going to be much bigger, right? because essentially the information that would have been in the tables is now in our source code. So we're generating these language-specific um, scanners. So in this case, what we'll have is instead of this generic while loop that just kind of reads forward and looks up in the table what uh, our next what our character type is and what our next transition should be, what we'll have is essentially you know giant case statements or giant if else statements in our code that say directly you know if I'm in state s and my next character is one of these then go then jump to this other state instead. So our code is going to be a direct encoding of what would have been in our tables. So what we'll do here is take a look at some sample code and then take a look at patterns in the code and how we could generate source code that conforms to those patterns based on our DFA. So we'll take our, our quick example from uh, last time around again. So we'll look for a token type that begins with an uppercase letter uppercase alphabetic character, and it's followed by one or more lowercase alphabetic characters. So if you recall, our DFA for that had three states plus the, the reject state. So we had our S0, where we hadn't seen anything, our S1, where we'd seen an uppercase, and then our S2, where we'd seen one or more lowercase. So again, what we'll do is we'll have the token that we've read so far, so again, that's just going to be a string that starts off as empty. We'll have a stack that keeps track of the accept states that we've run through. And again, we'll just stick some special flag on the bottom of that to indicate another you know, stack's empty pretty much. And we'll start off, our current state will just be our start state, S0. So just like with the table driven. And what we'll do is essentially have a whole bunch of go-to statements and labels in our code. So we'll have a label for each of those states. So a label for S0, a label for S1, a label for S2. And then we'll have a bunch of source code for what we do during state S0. If we're in state 0, what do we do? And then we'll have another block for S1 and another block for S2. And then our code for S0 might look something like, okay, well, I'm in my start state, read a character, add it to my token, um, I'm going to keep track of my state, so I'll push S0 on the bottom. If my character is an uppercase alpha, so you know you can say if, if it is uh, an alpha and it is uppercase, then go to S1. So we'll jump directly to the, the block for S1. So what we're going to be going to be doing is jumping directly in our code from state to state. And if it's um, anything else, then essentially we're going to wind up with a special block of code at the end to handle our rollback and that kind of thing. So final is going to be where we handle our rollback if we need to. So for S0, we just have this one kind of fixed block of code. And similarly for S1, right? For S1, we'll have a block of code that says, okay, I'm in state S1, read a character, add it to the end of my token, push S1 on my stack, and then say, okay, well, if I'm uh, if my character is a lowercase alpha, then I can go to state S2. If it's anything else, then I might have to roll back, so let's jump to this final state. So again, just these direct go-tos that we're jumping between the states. 
And if you look at it, it's pretty similar to our S1, right? Or our S0, right? We've got a read, we've got a push, we've got an if cart, if the char is whatever, and a go to and an else. So pretty straightforward. For <clears throat> our S2, we're going to go through, read the next character, append it, uh, clear the stack. We need to push and um, in this case, we'll clear our stack on accept states. We'll remember our non-accepts. We'll push our S2 and we'll keep going through this. And eventually we'll hit our final state. And for our final state, this is where, again, we've got a label for our final state and we'll have a block that performs our rollback. And we'll just roll back while we're not in S2, pop the top that pop the top state, chop the last token off, and roll back one input character in our input. And eventually, when we hit the end here, we're either going to be in our S2, our S0, or our S1, um, and we can classify based on that. So we can have our just a general chunk of code here that says, okay, let's if I'm in S2, return accept. If I'm in anything else, reject. So we can produce code to do this. And if you notice, we've got a fairly clear pattern for each of our different states, right? For each of the states, we've got a read the next character, append it to the token. If it's an accept, clear the stack, push the state that we were in, um, because there's no point, again, we're pushing stuff on this, or clearing the stack if we're never gonna roll back past that point. Pushing our current state, and then going through and adding a chunk for each of the possible transitions from the current state. In, a, in this example, we only had one for each of them, but there might be three or four different valid transitions from any given state. So for each available transition from our current state, just throw in, you know, if our character is whatever the type is for that transition, go to whatever the next state is. So if I'm putting together a code generator, it can go through and say, okay, I'll read each of the states in my DFA, and for each of them, I'll create a label, I'll stick in a read and an append. If it's an accept state, then I'll stick in an instruction to clear the stack. I'll stick in my instruction to push the state. And then for each transition from my current state in the DFA, I'll add a line that says, if the character is, whatever that character set is for that transition, go to whatever the next state is. And so again, it's easy from the DFA to generate the correct code for that particular chunk. And then we add one final one that says, okay, you know, if, uh, if I get here, I need to go to final, right? I need, you know, I've got to roll back or I'm in an accept. And then again, the structure for final is pretty straightforward. You know, well, the, well, I'm not in one of the accept states. So this is going to be specific to whichever the set of states are for my specific language. But again, if I'm reading my DFA, I know which ones my accept states are. So I can say if well S isn't one of them and my stack's not empty, pop the top state, again, relatively simple to generate, chop the last character off, roll back one character of the input stream. And then my final chunk is if S is one of those accept states, return the token type that matches it, otherwise reject. You know, if S is A1, return whatever that type is. If S is A2, return whatever that is, blah, 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 blah. Otherwise, reject. So again, it's relatively simple to produce my scanner generator, right? To have it say, okay, well, here's the chunk of code that I'm supposed to output for each of my DFA states and the transitions from them. Now, it can be kind of tricky to classify your characters, right? Sometimes coming up with a, a function or a chunk of code to give you decent classification of the characters for a given transition, um, you can essentially wind up building yourself a little lookup table. So there are times when table lookup just is the effective way to go based on the types of characters and the transitions that you're building. So you're always looking at this trade-off between the size and speed of a table lookup versus the size and the speed of the code. And again, that really depends on the language that you're trying to go through and tokenize. So 
you know, the, the advantages and disadvantages of the uh, direct coded versus table driven really depend on the nature of the language that you're looking at. All right, what we will take a look at next time is just briefly considering uh, hand-coded versions where you're trying to let your developer make their best pick of the table and direct-coded approaches.